Howdy folks, it's New Tool Thursday this week at Coffee and Tools. And uh, I've got a pretty cool thing here up because I've been shopping it out a little bit. Got a table saw, got to have had a few table saws, and I've never had a good uh, miter gauge for my table saw. And so I went shopping online, couldn't really find anything. Everything was anywhere from $80 to $129 for the type or this, you know, what I wanted. So I got one here for, I think it's $44. That's cheap. And it was shipped out of, out of uh, New Jersey. So it only took a few days to get here. So I got to show it to you, but I'm also going to show you the web, uh, the web page where it came, where it's sourced from. And also I'm going to show you the gauge itself and how it assembles when you get it. Cause when I got mine, there was uh, no instructions with it. So it was kind of a no brainer to put it together, but at the same time, it's like everything else. Uh, you know, sometimes with uh, a little bit of help, it's a lot easier to, you know, throw it together. So we'll disassemble and reassemble or whatever, just to show it to you. And I think it's a terrific tool for the price. And again, it's from the, uh, my good friends over there at uh, Bang Goods of all places. They've got actually two of them, an expensive one, which, you know, you, if you have the money, hey, buy it. But for me, um, it's sort of a tight budget thing. I just wanted a good miter gauge that would fit my Craftsman saw. So we're also getting into size and sort of, you know, that's really, I'll give you the information so that you can check your saw table and see if it'll even fit your table before you uh, order something like that and then find out maybe there's a problem or not, I don't know. We'll give it to you in inches and we'll also give it to you in uh, millimeters. We'll do both that way. You know, we've got all our bases covered on that too. But first, let's have a look at this gauge. I guess we'll call this fully assembled because that's about what it is right now. And I'm gonna have you close up and take a look at this bad boy. Is that close enough? I think it is. First off, uh, what I wanted was something with adjustable slots so that if it was a little sloppy, I could tighten them up here with you know some gussets. Now, there is some wheels that go underneath here. I took them off because they did conflict with the saw a little bit and I really don't, I don't like that T-bar track thing that they're doing these days with the saws. I can't just lift this thing out. I have to slide it all the way back out or something from my saw. So the other thing was it has this really cool, here, check this out, adjustable, you know, uh, stop. And you can just lock it wherever you want to like that. Also, you got a little finger thing there and you can flip it up so you don't have any, you know, stop back here if you don't need it. But when you do need it, you can put that down and then you can cut multiple boards. Uh, you can also set this, here, I'll go better to the back here and show it to you. And you can set this to the center here and then you have a nice way to dial this thing into right up to wherever your blade is. So you can bring this, you know, I bring it in with a quarter of an inch or a half inch, whatever you feel comfortable with. And when it came in, there was these little black plastic caps and they were on here and I thought, well, what the heck's the point of that? And I took them off and apparently it's just part of the shipping process as near as I can tell because the uh, manufacturer actually shows these without those black caps on. So it's just for shipping, but it does throw confusion in when you first see it. You get your two screws back here for adjustment and same with this thing here. There's just a, a single screw that drops a small, uh, I guess we'll call it a T-nut that slides on the track up and down here. Same thing with the miter itself. It has the two back here with the little T-nuts for the T-track. And also this came in loose and of course you just screw it on and you know you have it kind of thing. It's really cool. You also have a little locking pin here that you can screw out and yeah. And take that out of there if you want to. Unlock this. Change the, you know, change it to whatever. But you can also See if you, can, if you leave it in loose, it'll drop into the hole and it'll help. And then you can lock it everything down tight so you have your, you know, dip, depending on what angle or whatever, if you want to cut something on a 45 or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, the gauge itself, like I say, was about $44 at Banggoods. Banggoods has some terrific prices on some, you know, sort of inexpensive uh, items. The tooling they're showing is really a quite a selection and this like I said this came out of a warehouse in New Jersey so it didn't take you know a long time you know, show it to you a little better there yeah da, da, da. it didn't take a long time to uh, receive the tool so it was shipped here within days of ordering and look at that thing 
I don't get any affiliate or sponsorship money or in my pocket or anything like that. Else. It's just something I wanted to show you guys this week because I got this. I've been wanting one for my table saws over and over again. And I finally got a table saw that, you know, I decided, ah, you know, it's a nice table saw. Really need a nice miter to go with it. So let's go over the table saw and measure the miter slots on the table saw and just see what this fits and maybe you can go from there. So here we are actually on the saw now and you can see how this, you know, this just slides pretty nice. I put some wax down so it's not, you know, really dragging on metal or whatever here. But the whole secret to this is the slot and uh, most saws should have about the same, but this one here is a three quarter inch opening. So at least we've got that. And for you international fellers, because I know we got international viewers, <laughs> you didn't think I could do this in metric, did you? Yeah, I got you beat. Ooh, baby, I got you beat. Yes. And look at that. We're going to get accurate. Uh huh. Accurately, this one here is showing 19 millimeters opening right here. Now, let's just. Just for fun, I'm gonna slip, flip this guy over for a minute. And we're just gonna check this side too, just see. Yep, 18.9 millimeters, almost 19 millimeter. And uh, if you measure it with a tape measure in America, we show it's just a hair under three quarters of an inch. I mean, it is, basically we'll say it's three quarters of an inch. If there's any other uh, sizes you guys need, I can't imagine what that might be, but just in case somebody asks, because it does seem to, strange things pop up, there's three eighths of an inch uh, thickness deep this way. And again, for the international gang, the, I will say 9.6 millimeters uh, deep that way. So it's really made for the US in, in size. However, <laughs> this is not gonna be the best part of this deal, but I don't have a problem with it. And the reason is uh, they did send a, a self sticky tape that you can put across here. So you can have your, you know, a tape measure scale across here, but it's in metric. And that's to me that I don't really care. I don't, I wouldn't use it if it was up here anyways. I, I would never have any reference to it. I don't believe. And so that's up to you. If that's some kind of a deal breaker, well, Really feel sorry about that <laughs> because even the scale that I have here on the saw is the same thing. I'll be honest, it's really nice to look at. It sits there and it does, you know, it's a wonderful thing, but I actually use a tape measure off the blade of my saw whenever I cut anything or do anything. So the scale here or the scale here on the saw, I hate to say it, utterly useless. Yeah, you want to save some money, don't even bother putting it on there because it's, it's, it looks nice and it looks real official or something, but yeah, it's not gonna do much good. This is a really nice heavy cast piece on the back side here. So, and it's got some nice Allen cap screws back here to lock it all together. Got a nice finish. And of course you could use this, I guess you could use that as a handle if you want to, but you're gonna, you could actually get some clamps with the T-nuts even up here to clamp down on your uh, project. Now, if you did that, you would wanna have those wheels in here that I took off. I'm gonna show you the wheels. Okay, here's the wheels. They, they came, underneath, let's see if I can flip this over, and they sit in these little slots here, and they're both, you know, they're screwed in, and they help to follow the T part of this track here, but the problem with the miter slot with that, for me, is a lot of times I like to put my stuff down like this, put my wood in, and, you know, maybe start cutting or something. So these are kind of a super pain in the butt, because it means I gotta take the miter all the way off the saw, guide it up through, get it going, and the other problem with these ones was when I got them tight, they were locking to the saw. So when I checked underneath, you need probably a, a, just a thin, uh, you know, about the thickness of a human hair or something to shim between here and here so that it would fit properly. They actually fit, do fit the slot part, the bottom of the slot, but they don't work otherwise. And again, if you want, now just we'll just measure one of these up and see what they are. Uh, I'm going to go with seven eighths, and I'll bet you somebody wants metric on there. So let's do the metric thing too. I like working in metric on my uh, 3D printer. That's the only place I really 
appreciate metric. Okay, so 22 millimeter on the nose. Wow. So, and then the actual slot opening for my Craftsman here is 23 millimeters. So there's lots of slop in here for, for these things. But the problem was when the pick it up this way, it hits the top of the T-slot and causes this to bind. So I just took them off and thought, you know, long term was like, I really don't like these. I don't like using the, the T-part slot to lock this down so it doesn't, you know, come out of there or something. I actually want to be able to just pick it up, hang it up, put it down when I want to use it kind of thing. So these, like the tape measure thing, was kind of like, eh, I don't really use that, don't really want it. Uh, I guess it was all about safety. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, that gives you the size. And assembly-wise, I think if you take a good look, and here I'll show you this part too, just in case. So you can see, when you get this piece of aluminum in with the tool when you order it, uh, you can see where this goes to the center of the back, is bolted through with the T-nuts, and you've got this back piece that comes back this way, which allows you to put your stop brake up the top here. And as I said, it's look at that thing. That that's that's beautiful. We cut a piece of lumber this morning and I measured the 90 on it, and it was absolutely dead on. But this uh, saw so far has shown me that between the blade and the miter slots here, they're dead on. There's no there's absolutely to the you know. I can me I've measured this over and over and it is absolutely perfect. And in fact, I set my fence up to the miter slot and checked the fence, the blade, and it was everybody was happy. So, what's been coming off the saw so far has been absolutely amazingly, you know, accurate. But this is just a nice a really nice item and uh, like I said, and with the the stop, I really like the stop because if you're cutting small stuff and you can throw the stop down, you can sit there and you know chop away on it and just keep using the stop to uh, reference so you can you know cut 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 or whatever it is you're doing. Or if you're slotting even sometimes it's good to have a stop and you can set it up and make sure that when you slop you don't overdo it or go past the point of you know no return where you destroy a piece of lumber. So this week from Banggoods. This is the item, and it's about $44. I'm gonna give you a link in the description below so you can find these. Also I'll give you a link for Banggoods itself and go, hey, go shopping on there. They're, uh, they're the ones that also are where I source the uh, big planer from. And I wanna talk a little bit quickly about that planer because a lot of people I think misunderstood that planer is bigger than the ones that were shown on Amazon. Somebody sent me a reference and I appreciate, you know, he said, hey, you know, you can buy it $10 cheaper on Amazon. I looked at the one on Amazon. It was a smaller, uh, less powerful planer. So it was like, wow, well, we're really, you know, we're not really comparing apples, to, you know, to apples here. So I tried to uh, contact the fellow and just let him know that, hey, by the way, you know, yeah, it, that it doesn't apply. You know, you're close, but you're not right. You know, so, uh, uh that was this week at Coffee Tools for new tools. I guess you could get one of these for your, uh, well, I'll check those measurements. Make sure you got that three quarter uh, miter slot and you could also do it for say a bandsaw or something if you're into that sort of thing. I have a Craftsman bandsaw here. I have not even looked at it because uh, I've never had much luck with bandsaw. I had did use it. I did I did a project last week with the bandsaw. We didn't film it or anything, but uh, I will come back to it and I'll show you guys what I do with the bandsaw. Uh, and then you know in the coming weeks or something, we'll take a look at that project. Meantime, meantime, wow, what a what a great miter tool. That's a keeper and the saw. <laughs> really like the price of the saw too. <laughs> Uh, the if you missed it, uh, got the saw. Basically, I've got no money in that saw. I got nothing in it. You know, it was a sort of a yard sale special of just get it out of here, and it was theoretically broken. And I fixed it. It was way too easy to fix. But okay, let's not get into all that. Let's not go there. Ah. Anyway, so here's the. I'm going to show you this again. Look at the great big long handle on it. The physical size of this right here. And this is a 10 amp motor. So if you're shopping this thing out, yeah, Banggoods has this and it is an awesome, very strong, very powerful machine. The other thing I wanted to show you that I missed on last week was I've got holes here and here threaded and same with here. This thing will hook up to a table, which you can order from the website at 
bang goods as well and it flips it this way onto a table so you can use it like a sort of like a planer joiner real you know uh might be real handy for a lot of guys that are looking for portability but need that planer joiner kind of feature out in the uh, field or something maybe I showed this to a couple of woodworkers last night and they were shocked. They said, yeah, this is, they had purchased the one off Amazon and they said, wow, this is like a lot more machine, you know? So yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Just wanted to mention that this week because I'm trying to do new tools, but I, I sort of keep an eye on pricing. Uh, I've got a very, very inexpensive uh, detail sander coming in, I believe. We're going to show it to you. Hopefully maybe as early as the next week or the next couple of weeks, we'll do a detail sander that's under $30 say and it's electric and you know comes with sandpaper and everything so that's a pretty good deal and uh, so far I'm gonna order something again from uh, I guess that Banggood's website and see where it comes from because so far everything coming from them has come out of the uh, New Jersey warehouse in a couple days it shows up so if that's the case that's that's a good thing too you know it's no different than an order from Amazon it is faster than ordering from eBay where you never know what month the darn thing might show up. Let's not even go there, right? Stay off of that. Anyway, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and over and out.